All right, so I think I missed it because I kept checking in and out back and forth. That's since I've been <laughs> since I've been home, and I think I think they landed. So I'm about to check it out. So I'm not really watching this real time. <laughs> not watching this real time like normal, but be over here. Three, two, one. I almost thought like. They kind of losing sunlight, so I'm thinking like they was gonna abort the whole thing for the day. But they kept talking about they definitely gonna take off possibly. Or, so I guess they kept doing it. So we about to see how this go. Braided my hair last night. <laughs> By myself. Plus 30 seconds, Starship 10 has lift off. It's headed to 10 kilometers on its test flight from Boca Chica in Cameron, I just started Texas. rocking with that. Straight. You sparking water from time to time, but it's actually um like the best tasting sparkling water. If I can, I don't know. That's a weird way to explain it, because sparkling water don't even taste like nothing anyway. I think it's crackling. Is that the heat shield thing they added to it? On the bottom down here? So this section right here looks different from this section. That thing crackling. Who's crackling? Blocking something. Let me get my face out of the way. Right, there we go. Up here. It's like I'm saying, I think it landed because I was on. Coming up on T plus. What was it, Marcus House? I think I was on his um, the Australian dude. Because I think I, I came home and I peeped on real quick to Everyday Ash and I was checking out him. It's Marcus House, right? I watch him all the time. But y'all yeah, know what I'm talking about. If you know, you know. Um, I peeped the way I was talking to my niece. And then check back on YouTube. I'm thinking like, they seem real happy. I'm seeing the chat going like, oh, it's amazing and happy, blah, blah, blah. But, you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't see it, so. So, if this is the, the make, it's going to be pretty dope. This is what, the third try? Yeah, because I think it started with, with SN8. SN9. Kind of snuck past me. I didn't even know about that one. And I'm dead. That was a failure. But this is the land, then. Bro, it's about to be. This is about to be it right here. Starship coming up on eight kilometers altitude. We're getting ready to shut down the second engine. This is intentional. Okay. That's cool. They told us that this time. I remember last time I was watching it. I was trying to figure out like why the engines were cutting off and stuff. And I'm like, this is on purpose, whatever. But I'm I'm glad that they're giving a little bit more detail to what's actually going on and stuff. Um, got that coolio right there, man. That <laughs> the ODB. When they hit ten kilometers, right about in a few seconds. <clears throat> Coming up on T plus four minutes. We're at ten kilometers. We've gone into the hover. We're still being powered by the single Raptor engine. Hover. So it's not gaining any more altitude right now. Literally just hovering there. Was it, I guess it's not doing the um the height that it was. Yeah, I guess that's it. Because now it looks like it's flopping now, right? So yeah, 
It's on his way back. All right. Okay. Plus four minutes and 40 seconds. Starship has transitioned. It's flipped to the horizontal mode. Beginning, beginning the descent back to the landing zone. Okay, so they're not reaching like that, the high altitude like they did on the SN8. That looks dope. That looks really dope. It's a weird thing, like a few years ago, you're trying to like, I mean, you would see all the, the animations and stuff that he was presenting on his idea for this like starship, whatever. You're like, okay, all right. And then they had all the fins and stuff, or I guess it really didn't have minimal fins or anything on it with it. Maybe had like a couple of flaps, maybe. And they start changing it up, and they're like, okay, well now we're gonna do it like this, and do it like that, and you're like, and then the flaps are gonna be like actuated and all this and that, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> it was hard. Five minutes, forty-five seconds. It's hard to imagine, but now that you've seen it, it's like, wow, okay. To begin the flip sequence. Like even though like the science was there, it's just hard to, to think about something like that because it's just not used to. It's not something you've seen. You know what I'm saying? A lot of this that you're seeing now, I mean, you haven't been seeing rockets do so. Okay, it looks like it might land. So I, it probably is a land. Yeah, it's a land. That's a land. Cause the engines are firing like it should. It looks stable. Dust. <laughs> Yo, they got late. Oh, this is dramatic. I mean, it's dramatic as hell. It's like a dust cloud, bro. <laughs> got the smoke and dust clear out first. All right, landed. Some fire going on out there. Wow. It looks like it's leaning a bit too. Yeah, so that was it. That was dope. I want to see him do that again with the with the high altitude. Like, <laughs> what's they gonna do? They gonna do all that? Wow. Third time. My only regret is I wish I watched it live though. We've had a successful soft touchdown on the landing pad. I missed it like fifteen minutes. As a reminder, the key point of today's test flight was to gather mm -hmm. the data on controlling the vehicle while re-entering, and we okay. were successful in doing so. We had a nominal ascent. We had the mm -hmm. maneuver to place Starship horizontal when we reached 10 kilometers right on time. Mm -hmm. And then during the subsonic entry, it appears we had good control of the vehicle using the front and aft flaps. And as we approached the landing pad, we successfully lit the three Raptor engines to perform that flip maneuver. And then we shut down. Yeah, that's something they changed from the other times. I think they were trying to land with as planned, two engines on that uh, on other attempts. Of Starship on the landing pad at Boca uh, Chica. Uh, also, a congratulations to the Starship team in Texas. They've steadily increased the test launch cadence over the course of the program and have delivered some of the most exciting test flights many of us have seen in a long time. The Texas team has several more suborbital test vehicles in build with number 11 ready to roll out to the pad in the very near future. It's an inspiring time for the future of human spaceflight. Thanks for joining yeah, us. Yeah, halfway today, on that, and we hope the bottom half of that starship looks different. Of starship 11. Is it different material? Or is it like covered with something? Oh, that was dope. That was dope. That was dope. Oh. <laughs> Bro, look how dramatic that was, man. Like, you, you had to. You had to wait for all that dust and smoke to settle. <laughs> it was also like the appropriate amount of time. Like it didn't last too long, like about ten seconds, right? What, what? Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, and it's like phew, there it is. Like <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's up. Let's go. Phew.
Dang, I just wish I just was able to catch it live, man. I wish I turned right back. It's a few minutes, man. Anywho, um, man, let me know how y'all feel about this. It's pretty dope, man. Ready to see what they keep doing. Can't wait to, man. It'd be dope if they do, like, the full Starship configuration, man. Like, top and the bottom with the, the booster stack on it. Bro, like, oh, that's going to be dope. <laughs> that's going to be dope, Ayo. Hey, I'm out of here. It's your boy, Cadis. I'm out of here, y'all. Peace.